well, good morning, family. Well, it was great just to see all your faces last weekend once again. It was great just to be able to share the Word of God with you and look at you in the eyes and be able to share it and see the responses. It was fantastic. And I just want to encourage you just to look out for our Facebook posts. We, as mentioned, we are meeting every second week now. And, um, and we are meeting from 9.30 and registration opens at 9 in order to follow the protocols that have been given to us by government. And once again this morning, it's just an incredible privilege and honor just to share God's word with you. I want to pick, off, pick up a little bit from where I shared last weekend. But before I do that, let's pray. So Father, thank you this morning for your word. Thank you that we find life in your word. And when we spend time in your word, we find out more about who you are, God, and the way that you want us to live our lives. We're so incredibly honored and privileged to be able to have your word, to be able to read your word, to be able to not hide away from your word, but to be able to share your word publicly with others. And God, this morning, I pray that as I share your word, that the seed would fall on fertile soil and produce a great harvest, Lord, in each person's life, in each family's life, in each home, in each home. And, and then into our community. And so God, this morning, thank you for your word. We enjoy spending time in your word and we love your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this morning, like I said, I want to pick up from where I left off last weekend and just challenging each one of us not to go back to our old ways, not to want to desire to go back to our old ways. I believe that lockdown has taught us some things and we need to make sure that we don't go back to our old ways, but that we understand what God has tried to teach us through this time and pick up those things. And so this morning I want to talk about two paths that we often find in our lives, two paths that we often walk down, and I believe one leads to death and one leads to life. And you'll see in a moment what I'm talking about. And the first path that we find in our lives is the, called the path of familiarity. And the path of familiarity is a place that we often find ourselves in because we get comfortable with life. We enjoy this path. There's no challenges. There's nothing that distracts me or takes me off my routines. There's nothing that challenges me. But ultimately, I want to say that this path leads to death. And I think for most of us, it was a challenge through lockdown as our routines, as our way of life was challenged and we weren't sure what to do. And this is why it, it happens. And so the, the definition that we find for this path of familiarity comes from the old proverb. It says, familiarity breeds content. Contempt. So what does that mean? Well, it means this. It's an extensive knowledge of something or someone that leads us to a loss of respect for them or for it. And so familiarity breeds contempt. And in this path of familiarity that we often find ourselves in what happens is we think we know it all we think we have it all and so what happens is we lose our respect for the word of god we lose our respect for god and we lose respect for life i want to say because we, there's nothing that's challenging us and we're not following the ways of god because we think we know it all and i want to say it's a very comfortable path and the enemy wants us to find this path because it's a, a place that often leads us out of the will of God. And I want to say there's very few challenges on them. But the, the path that we're supposed to be walking on daily is the path of faith and trust. And so I want you to turn with me this morning to Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. I want to read out of the New King James Version and then out of the Message Bible. But Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, Come to me... All of you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And I want to say that this period of lockdown has caused us to once again turn our focus and attention to Jesus, turn our focus and attention to God. And most of us through before lockdown, I want to say, I believe we're walking on a path of familiarity where we had lost respect, where we, had, we didn't know where to go. We weren't challenged. And, and so it, it bred the contempt, which is what we don't want in our lives. But Jesus is saying, come to me. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. And I want you to highlight, learn from Jesus. We need to be learning daily from Jesus. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 out of the message Bible says, are you tired? 
I want to say, I think for most of us, just before lockdown, we could honestly say we were tired. We were run down. We were running hard. We were chasing and our lifestyle and our routines were out of order. It says, are you tired, worn out, burnt out on religion? Come to me, Jesus says, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Walk with me. Work with me. Watch how I do it. And I think during lockdown and through this period of, that we've had in our lives, I think there's, there's been this incredible challenge to us that we've had to once again learn the unforced rhythms of grace that are found when we are watching Jesus, when we are following in his steps, when we are walking with him, when we are working with him, and we are watching how he does it. And that means that each day when I wake up, there needs to be that desire in my heart. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And I believe this is an incredible challenge not to go back to our same old, same old. Not to go back to the path of familiarity, not to go back to the way that we used to do things. But I think there's this incredible challenge at the moment in our lives, in our families' lives and in our communities to find the way that Jesus wants us to walk. Because his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And each day we need to find out his ways. Each day of our lives we need to find out his thoughts. And so this morning I want to share with you, I believe, Something that we need to put into place in our lives in order to live the unforced rhythms of grace. To be able to walk a life that hasn't a heavy yoke, but has a light yoke where we are walking with Jesus, where we are working with Jesus, where we are watching how Jesus does it and then do it in turn. I believe there's this incredible opportunity and moment where we have this choice to make. And so in our lives and in the way that we walk, I believe there are six steps that we need to apply daily to our lives. And so how do we get out of this path of familiarity? How do we get back to a place where we are wanting to walk with Jesus, where we are wanting to work with Jesus, where we are watching what he does and do that in turn? Well, I believe the answer is found in the first point and it's found in Psalm 27. Psalm 27 verse 4 Psalm 27 verse 4 says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may, I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Jump with me to Psalm 63. Psalm 63 and Psalm 27 are linked together. Psalm 63 says, O oh God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My flesh longs for you. And in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up. My hands in your name, my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. And so the first point this morning that I want to make is that we once again need to have a hunger for God. If we do not have a hunger for God and we do not seek after him, we will stay on the path of familiarity and we'll once again want to go back to our old ways. So first point this morning is to hunger after God, to have a hunger for him, to have a hunger like no other but for God. One thing have I desired, early will I seek you. My flesh, my everything longs for you. I have sought after you 
And so the first point this morning is that we need to have a hunger for God. Because when we have a hunger for God, it leads to an encounter with God. And each of us, I believe, needs to have a fresh encounter with God. And so a hunger for God, a hunger for His presence, a hunger for who He is, leads to an encounter with God. And an encounter with God leads to revelation, fresh revelation. Turn with me to Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. So first point is to hunger. And a hunger leads to an encounter. And an encounter leads to revelation. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 says, Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint. Where there is no revelation, my people perish, is another translation or another version. And so if we do not have fresh revelation from the presence of God on a daily basis, we start dying. And that's why I say the path of familiarity leads to death because we think we have it all. We think we know it all and we think we know how to do everything. But I want to say that that leads to death. We need to hunger after God. Because a hunger leads to an encounter and an encounter leads to fresh revelation. And I want to say right now, people of God, children of God, we need God's revelation more than anything in the times and seasons that we're living in. Because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And the way that we get his ways and the way that we get his thoughts is to have an encounter with him because we need a revelation. 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9 and 10 says, But as it is written, I has not seen nor ears heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God, but God. Thankfully there's that but. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit, his spirit. And that's the encounter. As we encounter God, as we encounter His Spirit, God begins to reveal the things that He has prepared for those who love Him. And we need to know what He's prepared for us right now in the season. And so we have a hunger, there's an encounter, there's a revelation. And the revelation leads to repentance. Acts chapter 3 verse 19 Acts chapter 3 verse 19 says, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. And so as we have fresh revelation, as we find out what God's ways are, what God's thoughts are, there's a repentance that needs to happen in our lives because we need to turn around. We need to turn around from walking down the road of familiarity to a place where we're walking down the road of trust and of faith, where we are encountering Jesus daily in our lives. And so revelation leads to repentance. And as we repent and return, it says times of refreshing will come. Times of refreshing will come as we repent and we return. And then as the revelation and the repentance come, out of Romans chapter 12, verse 2, which is a very familiar, familiar scripture, it says, Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it requires a renewal of our mind. As God reveals to us His ways and His thoughts, our minds, the way that we think, needs to change. And Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. If we want to walk down the path of trust and faith, our minds need to be renewed daily in order to prove what is the perfect, acceptable, and good will of God. And that comes by hungering, thirsting, having that encounter, having the fresh revelation, repenting and returning, having our minds renewal, renewed, and then from that comes living out the revelation daily of that which we received. 
And God takes us on a journey. This isn't a sprint. This is a marathon. The journey of life requires us to hunger and thirst daily with after God. Because I believe in the season and time that we're living in, it's easy to default back to the familiar. It's easy to go back onto that road which we are comfortable with, where there are no challenges, where my life is easy. But I believe that we carry a heavy burden and a heavy load on that road. And it ultimately leads us to death. But Jesus says, come with me, walk with me, work with me. I want to give you a burden that is light and easy. And I want to show you how to do it. I want to show you how to walk this life. And I believe that's been the challenge for most people as their lives were turned upside down. As the lockdown happened, things changed. We once again had to repent and return because we had become familiar with what we thought were God's ways, what we thought were his thoughts, and he is walking a different path. So my challenge for you this morning, and for me as well, I want to say that it begins with that psalm. It says, one thing have I desired. Early will I seek you. We need to once again hunger and thirst after God. We need to once again hunger and thirst after his presence. Because as we do that, God says, if you ask, you will receive. If you thirst, I will give you water. If you are hungry, I will give you food. And so it starts with a hunger, because a hunger leads to an encounter. And an encounter with God leads to fresh revelation. And we all need fresh revelation right now of what God's busy doing here on earth. And how we as his sons and his daughters can work with him, walk with him, and show the world that he's a God that loves, that he's a God whose thoughts are higher than the world's thoughts, whose ways are better than the world's ways. Because the world is looking for answers and it comes out of his sons and daughters receiving revelation. And as we receive that revelation, there's a repentance that needs to happen in our lives. We need to turn around from doing things the way that we did it. And with the turning around comes a change of thought process that our minds need to be renewed. Because when our minds are renewed to the way that God thinks, it leads to the good, the perfect and acceptable will of God, which leads to life. Repent and return so that times of refreshing may come. Walk with me so that your burden will be light. And as I said, the last point is that when we've had those encounters, when we've had those times of repentance, we need to live our lives out of that revelation. And God, I want to say, doesn't just give one set of revelations one way of, of thinking. We can't just rely on today's revelation. Tomorrow, I need to wake up and say, God, I want to encounter you afresh. I want to live today the way that you want me to live. And I want to walk the way that you want me to walk so that I might enjoy the times of refreshing that come from your presence. And I may be a, a person that reveals to the world the God that is the much, much more, who does things in a different way, but it leads to life. And that happens as we step off that path of familiarity and say, okay, God, I've gone down this road long enough. It's only led me to death. It's only led me to a place where I'm thirsty, where I'm hungry. This morning, I want to stop and I want to turn around. I want to walk on the road of faith and the road of trust, where I trust in you, Jesus, implicitly, where I have faith in the way that you do things. And when I step, make that choice, I believe that is the hunger that you need, which leads to the encounter. And I believe that God is faithful and he will come and reveal the way that you're supposed to be walking. As we repent, he will change our mind and we will live in a place, I believe right now, where God wants us to be revealing to the world the ways, his ways, because his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are are not our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And as we step into those that place, I believe that we will encounter God in a fresh new way, but not just us, our families and our community. And I believe that the solution to the issues that are facing this world right now are found with you and me, the sons and daughters of God, as we begin to press into his ways, not do things the way we think they should be done, not default back to the way that we should be, we think we should be walking, but each morning to wake up and say, okay, God, early will I seek you. 
Well, for one thing have I desired, that I may dwell in your presence, in your house, all the days of my life. So let's pray. Father, thank you this morning that you're teaching us new ways, that you're training us, that you're shaping us, that you're molding us. And even, God, that it sometimes feels uncomfortable. Sometimes, God, it feels painful. God, I pray this morning that that hunger wouldn't dissipate, but it would grow stronger that for your presence in each person's life this morning, that we would want to know what, what way we should be walking right now, that we would stand out, that we would be a beacon of light because we love you. We've been called according to your purposes. And it says that you reveal to those who are loved and are called according to your purpose. You reveal your ways, your thoughts. And God, this morning, we want those ways and thoughts. We want to be a beacon of light to the world that is struggling right now, that has been challenged in many areas. We want to be the sons and daughters and say, we have a God whose ways work. We have a God whose thoughts are higher than your thoughts. And that when we implement your revelation, when we implement your word here on earth, I believe God, that we will see those times of refreshing coming that you've promised in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless. Have an incredible day.